Good, eh? So it seems there's a lot of uh, fond memories of these little handheld computers, basic, well, machines running basic from back in the day. So this is a, so I've got some TI related stuff. Um, this is a TI-92 and a TI-92 Plus. So I guess the, I, I, I don't know, I can't remember. Um, they are programmable. I need to, I need to get batteries for those, but certainly, Maybe not those ones, but these ones. These are cool. It's in that empty. So we've got a TI-74 basic calc and a TI-95 pro calc. So these are both basic programmable. Um, and with ROM cartridges as well. So that is statistics, apparently. Um, yeah, so I had a bit of interest in these as well. Uh, 8K, 8K RAM. I need to really sort these out. Um, these have got a bus as well. So there is... Um, I've, got a, I've got some CC40 stuff as well. I think this is, I'm not sure what, this is a TI-74 bus or something. Some clever person's done a, a video about interfacing a TI-74 with a TI-CC40, um, which is interesting. So I need to, I've got some various cartridges for these things. I need to clean these up on the list of things to do. So yeah, I've got a bunch of TI-95 Pro Calcs. And some TI-74 basic calcs. Also got the boxes in boxes as well. But I do have, <clears throat> unfortunately I don't have a working compact computer 40, CC40. I've got two in pieces. Let me put these down over here. So I've got one box. <laughs> I've got one box, that's what it looks like. Um, so this is the wafer tape drive. That was supposed to be the storage medium for it, but it was never released. So it was a bit kind of a bit difficult having a computer with no means of storage. So I think the printer is available. So that's the box. I've got, I've got some software. If I turn that off, maybe, I don't know if that's better. Got some software, memo processor with data communication. So that actually works with <laughs> more stuff. the modem. So not, it's not particularly rare or anything like that. It's just because of the hex bus, if I can get it out. Because the CC40 uses this, maybe I should turn this on. Uh, hex bus, which is eight pins, of course. So this is the modem. Um, and that's the cable. So it's more just to get try and get some hex bus cables. But really, you can make that up. Make that up using a, a two by four pin header. So that's the modem. So like I said, it's not particularly rare or valuable or anything. Um, yeah, unfortunately. Let me get my, just let me show. So we've got electrical engineering, finance, and, and this memo processor. Oh, I didn't realize it came with a, hold on, now do I have it in here? I should have it in here. I guess I'll go and put it somewhere. Wait a second, what have I done with this? Oh, did I pull it apart? I might have put, I wouldn't be surprised if I pulled it apart. Let's have a look at this other one. I know this is in here. Advanced Electrical Engineering. Active Filters. Bode Nyquist. Roots of Polynomial. Discrete Fourier Transform. Network Analysis. Passive Low Pass Filters. PLL. Signal Detection. So... 
Okay, and wafer tape. Reminding you, wafer tape, digital tape drive not available. So, good luck saving shit. So this is what the ROM cartridge looks like. For the CC40. Plugs in. So that means I could... I could... Means I could push, push that. There we go. Like that, maybe. There we go. Anyway, the meat in. Unfortunately, this is the the sad state of my two compact. Compact computer 40s, CC 40s. Um, just for a quick comparison. Let's zoom out a little bit. Yep, no, we have zoomed out. So, yeah. So, roughly the same size. So, uh, so an interesting machine. Yeah, interesting machine. Um, the problem I had with these is I think people left batteries in them, so there was some corrosion and, um, they've got soft, soft power on, uh, so they would power on, but they wouldn't stay on. So I did start looking at, I think when the power comes in here, see this, there's a lot of corrosion there. You've got the hex bus there. That's the hex bus. I'm going to zoom in. That's your hex bus interface there. Oh, and there's your cartridge cartridge port there as well. So it will go in. I don't like that really. And. Sorry. Stick your cartridge in there. Anyway. So it was soft power on, but. It wasn't staying on. And so I think there was, um, I think the idea is that, the, you know, it switches a transistor, so then the power remains on. I guess that's generally how soft power on works. Um, but it wasn't really working. So I was trying to figure that out. So you can see with this one, the display is damaged anyway. It's a good size display. Um, although, although no, having said that, I think it was only, yeah, it was only one line. It was only a single, single character. You can see it actually, yeah. So even though it's, it's quite large, you look at the cannon. So the cannon was, uh, four lines. The CC40 was a single line still. Um, but you know, whatever. So again, you know, we've got this corrosion up here. Um, so yeah, so something, I think one of them looking at it, it looked like the, like the main processor had been resolded or something. So yeah, anyway, so this is what the inside of one looks like at least. Again, look, look at this. So I don't think either of them stood much chance. So, so I had a quick look. And there's only one for sale at the moment in Hungary, and they want like 700 Australian dollars. It's like, no, it's not worth 700 Australian dollars. Well, depending on rarity, but yeah, so I might still have another crack at trying to get these working. Because um, they are a neat machine. Like I said, someone online has interfaced them with uh, the TIs. Oh, there we go. There's my memo processor cartridge found it so and actually if I, oh, if I do it I don't you see there <laughs> if I don't tip it over too much that's what the keyboard kind of looks like so it's a kind of a unique kind of machine that really a bit of a weird one put that back with the software um, and actually move this away I'll put you back in here I'm 
I do have, I've got a bunch of these made up. So I've got two different types. Um, it's for, for ROMs, so ROM cartridges. So they've got, you know, you can fit a quite a large ROM in. Here's one I've made up. And then you can select it with the, uh, with the piano key type dip switches. And this one here just basically extends the expansion port out to a header here that so you can, I don't know, do experiments. The problem is, let's see, it's one of these. These are USB ports. Um, problem is I don't have a working CC40 to try these out. So that's why they have remained in my little box of PCBs. So anyway, sometime in the future maybe I might get another I might have a I might be able to fix fix them or I might be able to get get one at a reasonable price. So there we go. That is the the TI <laughs> range of basic handheld computers. So I'll probably I'll get the 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 TI7495 up and running. That should be pretty easy. So yeah. There we go. Small diversion. Now back to making the uh, cassette interface for the Canon, I think.